mathematicians, welcome back to another video. I hope there's no autofocus, I fucking hate your autofocus boy. We are going to talk about something really interesting the next time, okay? Special functions, they are probably equally special as the digamma function, polygamma functions, etc. It really depends on the definition of special, what you consider to be more special than another special, okay? Never mind. Special functions, cool things popping up in analytic number theory everywhere. We have talked about this before, kind of implicitly, not explicitly. Never mind. Let us dive right in. Here's some motivation. I don't want everything to fall from the sky right here, okay? In comparison to another person, I don't like this. Okay, do you guys remember what we have solved a lot of times before? Namely, the Dirichlet integral. It was part of a kind of, um, yeah, um, it has been part of a video I filmed a few days ago, okay? <laughs> the sophomore stream, never mind. So this thing right here actually evaluates to pi over two. And this thing is kind of important. It's kind of part of the sine integral, okay? This thing right here has the form of the sine integral which is nothing but the imaginary part of the exponential integral, which we are going to introduce today. Okay, this, this has been the motivation. We have talked about this before. And the exponential integral in itself already played a role when um, dealing with integral representations for the euler mascheroni constant. Okay, I'm going to put it here. We are going to denote the generalized exponential integral with respect to some complex variables that it, it can be complex, okay? If it is, you have to do a little wick rotation, my boys, is equal to an integral from z to infinity of e to the negative t times n over t to the nth power dt. This is a really, really generalized boy and it has its problems with convergence sometimes, okay? So you can't plug each and every value of z into here other than that it's going to explode to infinity and shit like this. It's a complicated function. You have to evaluate this stuff numerically if you ever use it um, in the evaluation of an integral, okay? M most of stuff you can just do numerically here. Really doesn't quite matter. Where I want to go is, I want to go away from this thing a bit and go to the exponential integral. That's a generalized version. Now we are going to deal with the kind of special version that pops up a lot in many branches of mathematics. At first I would like to set n to be equal to 1. e1 is thus nothing but of z integral from z to infinity of e to the negative t over t dt. This does look better, okay? Maybe you have seen this before. It, it, it really plays a huge role, okay? In mathematics. Now, doing a little transformation, introducing a little substitution, we would like to transform t to be equal to negative t, okay? Simple substitution, changing up and lower bounds res respectively, negative z to negative infinity of e to the t over negative t integrated with respect to negative dt right now. Okay, we can distribute one negative sign into the up and lower bounds to change um, the order right here. Okay, integral from negative infinity to negative z of, okay, one negative sign to the front using the linearity of the integral, leaving us with e to the t over t integrated with respect to t. Why are you doing this, Papa? What's the point right here? Okay, one last transformation, then we are at our exponential integral. At first, I would like to note if we multiply both sides by negative one, we have that negative e1 of z is thus nothing but integral from negative infinity to negative z e to t over t integrated with respect to t. Now, if we have convergence as a given thing, so if our upper bound is okay and shit like this, then this thing converges absolutely and uniformly on its interval of convergence, blah, blah, blah. Then we can actually take the limit as z approaches negative z, okay? So if we let the limit approach negative z right here, we are going to end up with this integral, which we are going to call ei of z. This is the exponential integral. It's an important boy. 
for example, in analytic number theory. I like to emphasize how important it is. And here's an example of how important it is. Maybe you have heard of the prime number theorem before, okay? It just states that we have our prime counting function. So this is the number of primes less or equal to x. For example, if we have pi of 10, that's going to give us, okay, we have two, we have three, we have five, we have seven, gives us four, okay? Pi of 10 is four. Is asymptotically equal, we have talked about this before, to x over the natural log of x. This is the original prime number theorem right here. But we can transform this a little bit. Asymptotically equal means as a little reminder that the limit as x approaches infinity of pi of x over this chunk is going to approach one. Okay, it took mathematicians few hundred years to actually arrive at a rigorous proof right here. Okay, but there is something that holds. We can reformulate this thing right here. I'm not going to give a proof. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty hard to do a proof on stuff like this. We are going to work with our i right here. And I would like to introduce a substitution that comes in quite natural, namely that e to the t is for example x, okay? Let e to the t be equal to x. Meaning, okay, we want to also solve for t, we need this down here. Meaning we have that t is nothing but natural log of x. Also what we have is that e to the t dt is nothing but dx. Now if you plug all of this stuff in, we are going to have that ei of z, our exponential integral of z, is thus nothing but. When t approaches negative infinity, this x goes to zero. Also, if we plug z into here, into our t, we have the upper bound e to the z. What else do we have? e to the t, dt, what we have here is nothing but dx, this is good, over t, which is nothing other than the natural log of x. This also has a name, okay? That's that's another thing which has a name for itself. That's the logarithmic integral with a lowercase l right here, okay? Of e to the z. Okay, this looks a, a little bit weird that we have e to the z right here as the argument, so you can do a little transformation. If you simply want to get to your boy z right here, then you can also change the argument to z, meaning if we had z here originally, it's just take natural log, okay? So we also have this little connection that the logarithmic integral of z is thus nothing but the exponential integral of the natural log of z. This is a really important relationship. We have that some analytic number theory function that we are going to talk about in a second is actually connected to this generalized exponential integral that we have right here though. So there's a connection between all of those. This thing right here is just kind of the imaginary part of our generalized exponential integral or the exponential integral in itself. Then we have this logarithmic integral right here. Also the tangent integral, the cosine integral, blah, blah, blah. They are all connected to our boy, the exponential integral. Coming back to our prime number theorem that we have right here, we can reformulate this. I want you guys to notice if you take a look at the graph of Li of z, okay, the, the function looked like this. It was from negative and uh, from, from zero to z, I'm terribly sorry, of dx over ln of x. If our z is strictly greater than one, then we have a problem because if this runs through one, we have one over zero, which goes to negative infinity because we are going to come from the uh, negatives right here, okay, between zero and, and one, meaning our graph of this thing actually looks like this thing right here. Okay, goes down to infinity somewhere. Here's at, at one. Okay, ch just keep this in mind. And this right here is the point two. This is going to be important in a second. Meaning if we were to evaluate this thing right here with z being greater than one, we would have to take the Cauchy principal value right here. So limit as epsilon goes to zero of, okay, integral from zero to one minus epsilon. So a little bit less than one. The x over ln of x. Um, plus the integral from one plus epsilon, so a little bit more than one to a z, in this case, the x over ln of x. Now, with this way, you can get around this singularity that you have. 
But now back to the prime number theorem, main boy right here, okay, that we want to talk about. I've pointed it here, this number two. We can actually decompose this Lie that we have right here into two parts. At first, we have Lie of Z. Under the condition that stuff converges, okay, we are going to break this up into the integral from zero to two of the x of a natural log of x plus the integral from two to z. Natural log of x. How does this help? Well, this thing right here is kind of easy to evaluate. This is nothing but Lie of two. Okay, if you take this into account, this procedure, that's why I introduced it, you can actually evaluate this thing right here. This is something you can do numerically, it does work out. But this thing right here, this has a certain name. We have Lie of two plus capital L I of Z. This thing right here is the Eulerian logarithmic integral or did it have a different name shifted logarithmic integral? Never mind. This thing right here is important because we can reformulate the prime number theorem right here that pi of x is asymptotically equal to our Eulerian boy right here with respect to x this time. And people were certain that this thing right here is true because if we take a look at the prime counting function for example, so if we shift this thing right here a little bit, it looked something like this right here, okay, and it looked more and more like this curve. This is something that Euler had discovered, if I remember correctly, that's why it's called the Eulerian logarithmic integral. Okay, so this was just a little introduction. It wasn't really calculus heavy, it was just simple playing around. But I wanted to introduce this stuff to you. We are going to talk about this way more. We are going to talk about the integral, uh, the, the representations of this thing right here. For example, and the cosine integral, tangent integral, blah, blah, blah. And also a serious representation for this boy right here. It's going to be quite exciting. It's going to be cool. It's going to include, for example, the Euler Mascheroni constant yet again. But up until that, I think that's watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, and comment, channel, if you like. If you want to support channel a bit more by the Cita, the creator, support channel on Patreon. Until the next video, have a flamble day. See ya. Love you guys. Appreciate ya. Ciao. Ich hoffe, es ist so alt wie Lasse. Und die Straße dann so. Und das ist so, ja?